Let's start with an easy number like 72. So 72 is 7 tens and 2 ones. So when I rewrite this in expanded form, um, I'm going to take one place value at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that uh, 72 has 7 tens in it. And um, I'm going to write that as 7 times 10, because that's what 7 times 10 means, is 7 copies of 10, or 7 tens. Um, I put it in parentheses to kind of separate it off and help me see these as separate um, numbers here. So then I'm going to deal with 2. 2 is 2 ones, or 2 copies of 1, so that's 2 times 1. So in expanded form, 72 equals 7 times 10 plus 2 times 1. 7 tens, 2 ones. Let's look at this example. We're going to rewrite 50,291 in expanded form. We're going to take it one place value at a time. Uh, the first place value that I'm working with here is 10 thousands. So I have 5 copies of 10,000, or 5 times 10,000. Um, next, next I have the one thousands. Now, you'll notice here that I have zero one thousands. Some people would say just leave off the one thousands as a result of that, and that's not wrong. Um, but for me, I'd like to acknowledge that the one thousands are there. There's just zero of them, so one time, zero times one thousand represents that. I'm putting again each in parentheses to help me see them as separate. Now I'm going to take a look at the hundreds. So that's plus two hundreds, or two times one hundred. And we're going to do this for each of the place values. So next I have nine tens, nine times ten. And then I just have one one. So I'm going to write that as one times one. You see, I've, I've connected each place value with a, an expression showing as a multiplication expression um, the, 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 the value of each place value. So because there are five ten thousands, I wrote five times ten thousand. Because there are zero thousands, I wrote zero times one thousand. There are two hundreds, so two times one hundred, and I'm adding each of these together because that's what's uh, because if I add these all up, I'll get back to my original number. We had nine tens, so I have nine times ten. And lastly, I had one one, so one times one. Let's take a look at an example with a decimal number. Here we have 23.265. We're going to start off just like we have been before. We have two tens, so it's two times ten, plus three ones, so three times one. Now how are we going to show these decimal fractions? Well, here's how we're going to write two tenths. We're going to say again that there are two copies, so two times, and I'm going to write one tenth as a fraction. Then I'm going to add it to the hundredths, like this. I'm going to say that there are six hundredths, so six times one hundredth, and finally the thousandths. I'm going to add five times sorry about that little mess up in the video there. The five thousandths I'm going to represent as five times one thousand one thousandth, like that. It looks complicated, but when you do it step by step, it's really pretty straightforward. And the same thing in reverse. Let's see how this number gets put back together into standard form. Let's take a look at one section at a time. So we're going to zoom in here on 2 times 10. Uh, that's 20. Plus 3 times 1, that's 3. Plus 2 times one tenth, that's 0 0.2, plus six hundredths, so that's 0 
zero six plus five one thousandths, so that is zero point zero zero five. Now, if I look at this whole thing, really, I only have one one of these um, add ends, one of these things that I'm adding together for each place value. So they're going to be fairly simple to add up. And 20 plus 3 is 23, plus 2 tenths, 6 hundredths, 5 thousandths. And you'll notice that's the number I started with. And that's no coincidence. That's because I broke it out into each place value, and then I can put it back together pretty easily. Um, I hope this video has been helpful with understanding expanded and standard forms, particularly when it comes to decimal numbers. And as always, please let me know if you have questions.